Hey everyone, welcome to Retaliatory Strike. Today we have a game between myself, Ryan, playing Signar, and Tristan playing some more Scorn. Hello everyone, it's Tristan. I'm playing Supreme Archdominant Makeda, or Makeda 2, today. Uh, so I put three Cyclops Savage in her battle group, along with Moloch Karn, because gotta have Moloch Karn, and Optimus Marquez. Uh, we, for solos, we have uh, Hakar the Destroyer, Tyrant Redeem, and Avoid Archon. We also brought today Cataphract Akiari. Um, they are pretty pivotal to this list. Uh, you know, they were kind of the MVPs, no spoilers though. Uh, then I brought Legends of Halak, Paingiver Beast Handlers, Praetorian Swordsmen with their Officer and Standard, and Tyrant and Commander and Standard Bear. Now, I gotta apologize. I packed up my list, got over to Ryan's place, and uh, forgot to put Tyrant, Commander, and Standard Bear in. So they're gonna be a Warpborn Alpha or something like that, and a Signar Storm Gunner. So apologies in advance. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. Today I am playing a heavy metal list with Cray 1. It's 75 points. And for my list, I have Cray with two Centurions, a Firefly, a Hunter, a Minuteman, Thunderhead, and Squire. For solos, I have Captain Arlen Strangeways with Journeyman Lieutenant Alistair Kane, who is running a Hunter, and a Journeyman Warcaster running a Sentinel. So the idea behind this list is that Cray kind of turns Centurions up to 11 with them being able to uh, hit and repo if if they're fighting guys that only have one inch reach and then not being chargeable. Uh, I really noticed it against uh, Kador because they can charge in, do a bunch of damage, put up their polarity shield, and then repo back. And then his jacks literally can't walk and get to them. So they would have to trample, um, which is where I kind of got, got it. So the idea is the Centurions are that really heavy frontline unit and then Cray making them cavalry models like turns them up to 11. I have the Firefly in there to uh, up the damage of Thunderhead uh, because POW 16 sustained attacks after you pulse and auto hit stuff is just fantastic. And then Thunderhead's in there for to help with my uh, infantry clearing. So this is uh, he can like clear out infantry or he can end up hitting stuff really hard. And then I bring Kane with him to put on uh, fire for effect. So then when I pulse, my entire pulse is boosted. Uh, or if I'm shooting at something, then I'll have boosted to hit and damage rolls on that first hit. And then I can just sustain attack into them. I put the journeyman warcaster in there so I can put uh, arcane shield on the centurion, which makes them armor 24. So they are really difficult to deal with a lot of the time uh, and then I have the Minuteman because I find if one of the weaknesses of the list is if they're really shooty then uh, they can get a lot of damage into my models before I can get to them even with how fast they are so I ended up putting the Minuteman in there so then I can put on countermeasures and with a walk jump and repo he can move 16 inches in a turn which is just ridiculous to me. Um, and then uh, just some hunters in there for uh, long range uh, fire as well. So this is like one of my favorite lists uh, that I've made so far. It, like I pretty much one listed our last tournament that our group ran with it. And I, I probably gonna end up playing it a couple times on the channel just to help showcase it a bit. So uh, I hope you enjoy the list. Deployment. So we rolled off and Tristan won the roll off and chose side. So I am going first, obviously. So for my deployment, I'm putting Cray in the middle with Thunderhead. Uh, I, I like to line up Thunderhead across from troops and because I'm deploying first, I'm putting him in the middle so he can react to wherever I want him to go. And then I'm putting the Centurions going up each side, one for each zone, because they're great at holding zones. And I put uh, Kray's Hunter right down at the bottom, and then I put uh, Alistair Kane right next to Thunderhead, because I want him to put up fire for effect with his Hunter right next to him. 
And then I shoved in Arlen Strangeways in behind Thunderhead because I like to use him to empower uh, there. And then I have the Journeyman Warcaster in behind the uh, in behind Kane or Cray there because I want him to put out Arcane Shield on one of the Centurions as well. And then I put the Sentinel down below that Centurion so he can move up to where he needs to be for shield guard even though there's not that much shooting that can be shield guarded in tristan's list <laughs> and then i have uh my minuteman for advanced deployment and then we'll get into tristan's deployment once he gets his line <laughs> all figured out here i'm having a lot of trouble <laughs> i I'm, my, i was measuring it out and then my tape measure was like the tip of it was like half an inch off the table so i had to redo my whole eight full deployment and uh, then I kind of blanked and just stared at the mat for a bit and <laughs> decided, you know what, I need to put a model down so I can start kind of picturing where this goes. So I put Makeda dead center, and then I figure Akiari, they go uh, bottom zone. Uh, you know, MVP's of the list, right? Uh, so they're going to go there. I'm going to end up sticking the Tyrant Commander and Standard Bearer behind them so they can get, you know, uh, March and Pathfinder, all that stuff. Swordsman up at the top. I'm gonna put Moloch Karn uh, next to Makeda. They're gonna go and hang out and be wall buddies. Um, then I'm gonna put the three savages on her other side. We're gonna put Optimus Marketh right behind Mar Makeda. Uh, we have the beast handlers. They're gonna go behind the three savages. Um, Hakar the destroyer is gonna hang out with his swordsman friends. Or, you know, his fuel. That's what I like to call them. And the... Uh, Legends of Halak are gonna go right next to the uh, Akiari. And then the Void Archon and Redeem are gonna hang out uh, right behind uh, Moloch, Karn, and Makeda. And that will be my deployment. Uh, yeah, I have a, have a lot of issues with deployment here. I haven't played in a while, so my, my brain's just... <laughs> I think I, I was gone pretty much all last week and most of the week before, so I haven't haven't played in a couple weeks, and and I, I noticed it uh, piloting my list, which does take a little bit of uh, know how to run. That it was uh, didn't didn't get piloted as as smoothly as I was hoping that I would pilot it, but. Uh, other than that, for my advanced deploy, all I have is the Minuteman, which I deploy kind of in the middle here because I want to put countermeasures on him from the from Cray, just so if he can get in somewhere where they're shooting, it will be a nuisance. Signar, turn one. So pretty standard turn of running. But what I'm going to do is I allocate one focus to each of the Centurions so they can put up Polarity Field and Trample. So I just run the Firefly up. I go with my uh, Cray who walks up and I was a dummy and didn't have him in the range to uh, just cast countermeasures. So he goes up, he puts countermeasures and then he repos in behind that burning forest there. After that, I go with my Journeyman Warcaster who puts up Arcane Shield on the bottom Centurion and then charges forward. And then I trample forward with Thunderhead and then Repo 5 and I kind of gummed him up there. He could have got quite a bit farther. The top Centurion, I put up Polarity Field and then, or Shield and then trample forward Repo 5 so he gets a 12 inch movement which is pretty good for a speed 4 jack. I run the bottom hunter up to where he can get shots next turn. I move up Kane and put up fire for effect on Thunderhead and then use my three inch repo to pretty much go base to base with Thunderhead. And then I do the polarity shield and trample with the bottom centurion, run up Arlen Strangeways, move up the sentinel to get to be able to shield guard for all the people in the back there. And then I run my Minuteman up to Scorn, turn one. So I start the turn off by uh, remembering that I should have a Pathfinder objective, so I mentioned that. 
then I start measuring out some threat ranges and just decide to run the legends up so that Thunderhead can't just walk up and pulse and just auto hit them because that would really suck for them. Then I have some nice coffee and then I go and decide uh, that the Akiari, the heroes, uh, need to have Pathfinder. So they're going to go and uh, walk into the woods and find a good campsite. Uh, then I'm thinking about it, thinking about it, like, what do I need to do? Uh, looking at my list, having trouble with the app, and so I decide, you know what, this this uh, Cyclops needs to run and, and touch the flag that he can't score in any way, shape, or form. And then the other Cyclops just kind of walk and spread out. And here I'm measuring up and decide, uh, this is a probably a safe place for the, for the Void Archon. Beast Handlers run. Uh, Optimus Marketh, uh, Harmonious Exaltation to Makeda. Makeda casts up Deflection for two instead of three. And then she charges... I think she charges Thunderhead? Anyway, she goes and sits behind the wall. Uh, after that, I believe I have Moloch Karn go. No, I have Redeem go. He goes and sits there, and then Moloch Karn runs. And then the Swordsman kind of run. Um... Yeah, they just run and they stand around, looking all unpainted and bad. <laughs> and then Hikar runs. Signar, turn two. So, start out the turn by uh, doing all my power-ups and everything. I have the Squire give out an extra focus to Kray, so he's on six and gets to upkeep the uh, countermeasures and then I upkeep Arcane Shield on the bottom Centurion, and I upkeep Fire for Effect on Thunderhead. And then I'm looking here, and we're checking to see if that top Centurion has line of sight to Makeda, and he does. And I'm looking, and I can pretty much, I can get both of my Centurions onto Makeda if I put up my Horsepower spell. And I could feet and shoot her and give her minus two defense. But it's a bit cheesy and I, I want to try uh, fighting this game out a little bit more. So for my uh, allocations, I allocate one to uh, Kane's Hunter, one to the Sentinel, uh, one to each Centurion, and one to the hunter leaving me on two so i can cast horsepower if required i then decide i'm not going to go for the assassination run so i just move up the bottom hunter that's in kane's battle group and i boost to hit the void archon and i miss i can't roll a seven on three dice so he just repos back into a little bit of safety i then move up the firefly who then takes a shot at the Void Archon as well. I boost to hit and I hit and then it bounces to D3 nearest so it hits uh, Redeem and the one Savage and uh, I get like three points of damage onto each of them. I rolled a 10 on all three damage rolls which was uh, pretty good for me and then I just repo him forward there so because I want to put out my uh, the plus two damage against with lightning damage thing that he has. I then move up Thunderhead to where he can shoot at the Legends of Halak. And I boost a hit because I totally forgot that I upkept fire for effect. And I missed. So then I bought and boost and missed again. And then he repos five inches back. After that, I, uh, I decide I'm going to go with Cray, so I move up and I'm taking shots at the Void Archon and I'm not boosting because I figured I guess I better have to focus to reduce with. And then I move up with Kane, who then takes shots at the Legends of Halak. I, I boost a hit and I miss and I boost a hit again and I hit and I do my magic or trick shot. So I end up finishing off the one... Uh, legend and then i do four points of damage to another one 
Uh, after that, I move up with the Sentinel, who then uh, rolls up and gets three shots. So he boosts to hit a Legend. He hits, and then he boosts damage and finishes him off. Uh, and then he takes his other two shots at, another, at the last Legend there, and I can't hit him. So... Now I'm going with the Minuteman who walks and then jumps into all the guys there and he can get base to base with two of them so then he flak fields and it's not ones to kill them and then we are checking here and I get three of them within two inches so that's POW sixes and I need nines to kill and I end up killing all three. I, I was rolling tens like a boss with him. And then he takes his slug cannon gun at one of them and then shoots at another one uh, at the commander, which Tristan now remembers that he can stay death. So he ends up staying death on that one. And then I repo five inches back behind the water there to hopefully make it a little bit more difficult to get more guys onto the Minuteman. After that, because I didn't put up horsepower I can't reach anything with my centurions so they put up polarity field and then just trample or run or they don't end up moving very far and they just stay out of the walk and attack threat ranges of uh, the beasts for the most part there I then run my journeyman warcaster over to get on that flag and then I run the squire to body block for K Cray. Scorn turn two all right, so I'm kind of kicking myself for forgetting that's why I left a huge amount of fury on uh, Makeda, that I could stay deaf. So uh, at this point, I'm thinking I have to kill this caster, otherwise I'm going to lose the attrition game. So these are vengeance moves um, for all the swords that died. So I'm looking at it, and I'm pretty sure that everyone can uh, I can get Malakarn and uh, redeem onto... Cray. So the beast handlers move up and they just enrage all the beasts. Um, so I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, where do I go first? Uh, looking at whether or not the Halak uh, can get on there. Uh, so I go over and um, have the Savage go and he's going to go and put some damage into, uh, into the Firefly, I believe it is. Does a swings. Um, does a little bit of damage and misses after buying and boosting a bunch. So, now I'm looking at it again. Really, it's all about declustering everything. So, I move the Archon forward and it's going to spray at Kane. <clears throat> yeah, it's going to spray at Kane. Uh, I'm going to boost a hit. I hit him. I boost damage and I kill him. I take his soul. I uh, hit the Jack. Um, I do a few points of damage to the jack, or I don't damage it at all. I then uh, void step over, just making sure that we can actually fit in there. Yeah. So I void step over, I then uh, punch him in the back and I just boost, boost uh, damage on him. Because I only need fours to hit him. Uh, I, I do a fair amount, I think about just under half the jack's damp HP. Yeah, just, just about half the jack's HP with that. Alright, so, next I gotta think, what am I gonna do here? So, uh, Optimus Marketh harmoniously exalts, I send in another Savage to uh, slash up the um, the Firefly. I think I leave it on four boxes? Maybe? No, I hit him and I, I wreck him. Never mind. Yeah. So I clear off my flag. Uh, so, Warcar comes in, he just, he's just gonna swing and hit him. So I swing, I hit, and then four dice damage, I just destroy little guy. Sidestep out of the way, um, and then, yeah, Makeda goes over, she's going to cast, um, uh, She's going to cast Dash for one, thanks to Harmonious. She's then going to uh, cast Storm Rager onto, um, onto uh, Redeem. And then, yeah, she's, she's going to feed. 
So then we send in Redeem. He's going to walk up thanks to uh, Dash and being pushed to the limit by the uh, the Tyrant Commander. So he can go ridiculously far. And then we're going to uh, Lance attack him with the Armor Piercing. I hit him. And then it's dice plus like six or something or dice plus five. So, and so I roll pretty good there. Um, Moloch Karin charges. He hits the uh, Sentinel. And then I think he like, yeah, he toasts the Jack in one hit. Sidesteps forward into Kray. Uh, hits Kray. He's hitting it like dice damage at a, as a Weapon Master, so it's kind of gross. Uh, buys an attack and ends up killing Kray. Finishing the game. Afterthoughts. So it was a pretty fun game, even though there was some uh, serious mistakes on my end there. <laughs> <laughs> I think on both sides, really. Yeah. Um, and I think part of it was the fact that both of us haven't played in a little bit. So <laughs> yeah, I <laughs> I really wanted to play the uh, Akiari because they're like really awesome looking models. Stat wise, they lack, but I, I really wanted to play them. And then I ended up just sitting them inside the forest and that's all they did they just camped you know there's like this is fun we got to see we got to come guys <laughs> they, they they got to pull out the wind there for you right? yeah yeah um it was the threat there's <laughs> like oh yeah we we can pull you but only your lights so you're even your caster is like oh, it, yeah i don't care <laughs> yeah uh like and p part of the reason why i think i did so bad is I don't play against Scorn all that much, so it's it's still a bit of a learning curve for me playing into it. So uh, I, I definitely want to get more games in with you so so I can improve my Scorn gameplay. <laughs> but uh, I have to play Makeda 1 against you because I've beaten you with Makeda 3 and in that last tournament, and then this one, Makeda 2. Now I gotta do Makeda 1, you know? Maybe it's just a Makeda block you yeah, got. Maybe, maybe it it's... Might not just be, it might not be scoring. I, I hear Makeda, and I just I go into the black and have no idea what's <laughs> going on. Anyway. helicopters in the background, yeah. you know? Like... <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Um, so you chose to go first in that game. Do you feel that that was the correct choice for I chose winning? Second. I chose second. Or you chose to go second? Like, I know you won, but do you feel like... That was the correct choice. Well, uh, I, I wanted to make sure that I got the side with the wall so that if I did get a chance to pull you, there wasn't going to be a wall that was like, oh, uh, you can't actually pull me over this. So it was the whole thought was for me to use the uh, Akiari, and then, and then I just <laughs> never did. Um, it's kind of funny. Like that's that was 15 points that just sat in that forest that whole game. I mean, didn't need them, but. <laughs> no. Um, I do want to mention though, so we did, we kind of proxied out the, and rolled out the assassination attempt that I would have had on Makeda there after we had decided that the one centurion could have seen her and we rolled it out and I would have killed her. It was a little bit of good rolling on my part. Like my uh, centurions each... needed eights to hit and they critted each time that they charged well, because the first one you charged you rolled six six five and then the next one you rolled five five six so yeah. <laughs> i mean I, just kind of you know average rolls right i i, I rolled good. like a boss to hit her i was only needing eights like i needed those rolls for all the shots that i took at her because uh, i i, I dumped a bunch of shots into her but with her being armor or defense 21 over the wall and then, up and, and then uh, defense 19 once i hit with a Feet, yeah. feeded uh, guns were not target. gonna kill her <laughs> yeah uh, it, it was it, it wasn't like a terrible chance to hit like eights isn't terrible and then the fact that I got like a boosted charged attack for free which was fully boosted uh, really helped but getting those sustained attacks is kind of what made the assassination yeah. attempt work um, <clears throat> well, I mean, being cavalry, like just turning your jacks into cavalry is so good. Oh yeah, and then I, that, that two cost spell that every one of your battle group gets plus three plus, inches, of plus three inches of movement on the charge. Which is just like okay, <laughs> <laughs> and then his speed also gives him plus two. So I had a another iteration of this list with Lanissa Rival or whatever, where she can put up oh, hunter, hunter, and then my centurions threat sixteen inches, like. Which is ridiculous for a speed. You almost hit a model. point of redundancy with that. <laughs> it's like, oh, 
I just threat forever. So. Yeah. But I mean, I, <laughs> as we were talking after, like directly after the game, uh, Malakarn is kind of nasty with his threat oh. extension because even his base charge of a, of threading 11 inches, and then if he hits both initials, it's he gets another four inches of movement out of that. Which is 15 for doing pretty much nothing. Yeah, just like, for being him. For, well, to get that, to get that 16 inches, like I have to cast a cost two spell, I have to use my feet, and I have to land a hunter's mark to get, I mean, just ca with just the cost two spell, then it's 14 inches, which is still really good. Yeah. But it does cost a little bit more than I'm going to charge them in, and I have this these models that just make them hit POW 16 Weapon Master for some godforsaken reason. And then if I can get them base to base with them, he gets to charge for free. And and it's like a minimal, and it's like a cheap unit that you're always going to bring because they also help with Fury Map. So yeah. uh, if you don't know, I. I I, I get frustrated he, he, he with score. Is, he is triggered. Uh, <laughs> I think I forgot to mention, I think in my last turn there, that I the object my objective gave Pathfinder Molokarn, so that's why he can charge him the wall there. Uh, I actually find that I'm taking the Pathfinder objective more than like any other objective because it's just a way around like not having to pay for uh, a Gladiator Titan, or if you're in uh, Disciples of Agony, it's a way to not have to Bring the, terrorizer. bring the terrorizer yeah so it's kind of one of those nice things where it's my like my other lists so i don't need to pay like the the huge tax of of a gladiator because yeah they're good beasts but um they're they, they are expensive they're expensive i, I also do want to point out uh my fumble there with uh camping too instead of just putting admonition, admonition on my caster so then when he got something to me i could just be like See you later, loser. But yeah. Oh well. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I wouldn't like. I probably wouldn't have gone for the assassination attempt if you had had put that on there. Because I'd have been like, well, there's no way of me even like getting to yeah. him. So which would have been better than just camping too. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love admonition. Yeah. I should bring a uh, mortal one list with some. Oh some, yeah. Some uh, shenanigans. I, I'm, I definitely want to get more games in against Scorn so I can get better against them. So. I won't get as triggered whenever I hear the <laughs> the list of rules on on their on their cards. Like some of the stuff is just ridiculous to me. All right, children, <laughs> gather round. I'm about to read my novel. <laughs> yeah, the, it's and, story time. An ancestral guardian needs like three <laughs> cards to fit all the rules onto. It. Anyways, other than that, do you have any uh, parting afterthoughts about the game? Akiari MVP. Yeah, they they did the most work in yeah. this game. That's for sure. They they were like. Don't worry, we'll get the stew on. You know, we'll, we'll get the uh, we'll, we'll set up a nice campfire in the woods yeah, here. Yeah. Once everyone else does all the work, we'll you know you can come back. We'll have a party, boys. <laughs> we'll show you our party tricks with our harpoons <laughs> while we pull in the inert jacks and see look how helpful we were. <laughs> they're, they're great at just piling all the yeah. medium base jacks. Like wonderful <laughs> at kids parties. <laughs> Other than that, thanks for watching, and this has been Retaliatory Strike. <laughs>